Hello, my name is Brian Kloss, and I'm the author of the new book, Fluke, Chance, Chaos, and Why Everything We Do Matters. Now, this is a book about how small changes can have big consequences, how arbitrary and accidental forces change our world and change our lives. And nowhere is that more true than when we look back at history and see it upended by these small incidental flukes. So I'm gonna walk you through five of them where history pivoted on a small accidental, seemingly random change. The first one starts in Japan in 1926, where a couple named Mr. and Mrs. H.L. Stimson decided to go on a vacation to Kyoto. And when they got there, they fell in love with the city. Now this doesn't seem to matter, except for 19 years later, the husband in the couple, Henry Stimson, turns out to be America's Secretary of War at a pivotal moment during the end of World War II, when they're deciding where to drop the first atomic bomb. Now the targeting committee recommends unilaterally and unequivocally that the bomb should be dropped on Kyoto, much to dismay of uh, Stimson. So he twice meets with President Truman to get him to take this off the list. And the reason why the first atomic bomb is dropped on Hiroshima instead of Kyoto is because of one couple's vacation 19 years earlier and how they had an affinity for the city that they later would save. The second fluke that I want to talk about is a fluke tied to the Cretaceous period and to Donald Trump, seemingly totally unrelated. But they actually are related because during the Cretaceous period, much of what is now the United States was covered by an inland sea. And the coastline of it ran through what we now call Georgia, Alabama, and Mississippi, for example. And on that coastline, there was a lot of phytoplankton. When the sea dried up eventually, the phytoplankton, their bodies basically became soil. And the soil was this dark, rich color that was extremely fertile. Now this matters because when that great scourge of human history, slavery, came about, enslaved people were brought to the areas with this black belt where the black soil, the really rich soil was, because it was exceptionally good for growing cotton. And so the location of people and plantations basically followed the swoop of this ancient inland seas coastline. Now fast forward to the 2020 election, and you have a lot of descendants of enslaved people who have decided to stay in the rough area uh, where their ancestors lived. And because African Americans disproportionately voted for Democrats in the 2020 election, if you are to map county by county level election results, blue and red, you will see the swoop of that ancient inland coastline, which in some pivotal states like Georgia played all the difference, linking this Cretaceous period to the outcomes of the 2020 election. The next fluke that I'd like to talk about is related to the Battle of Antietam during the American Civil War, which happened in 1862, in September of 1862. Now, at one point, a Union soldier is doing his patrol and he comes across three discarded cigars. And he looks closely at them and finds that some paper is wrapped around them. It turns out to be Special Orders 191, the entire marching orders of the Confederate Army. And they're signed at the bottom, but he doesn't know whether they're genuine. So he brings them to a general to assess the, the orders. It turns out he brings them to a person outside of the general's tent who first looks at them. And that is the person, the one person in the Union Army who can tell immediately whether the orders are genuine. And that's because the Confederate who signed them was someone who used to work signing checks in the army. And the person outside of the general's tent worked as a bank teller who processed those checks. So he had seen that signature dozens of times before and knew instantly upon looking at it that the orders were genuine. The Union Army therefore moved and the Battle of Antietam ensued a few days later, a pivotal moment in the American Civil War. The next fluke I'd like to talk about is one that's about human history in the long scale, the evolution of our species. But it's an extraordinary fluke, probably the biggest fluke of all time. So according to the best scientific research we have, two billion years ago, this extraordinary accident happened where a bacterium bumped into a prokaryotic cell and ended up inside of it. Something that as far as we know has happened once in the two billion uh, years of evolution and never since, because this time it gave rise to the mitochondrion, which is the powerhouse of our cells. And all complex life was made possible by this fluke. So when you see a snail or grass or trees or us, all of human history, is derived from this single evolutionary accident two billion years ago. 
The final fluke I want to talk about is the origin story of our weeks. When we name our weeks, we're actually naming Anglo-Saxon gods. We've got two, Woden, Thor, Frigga, etc. for the different days of the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. But why do we parcel our days out into seven-day chunks? Why do we parcel our, our time out into seven-day chunks? And the answer, as far as we can tell, goes back to King Sargon I of Akkad, the first person to, uh, to subdivide the world into seven-day chunks. But our modern origin story for weeks comes from the Romans, where they believed in the power of celestial bodies. And there were five visible planets plus the sun and the moon, and that gives us seven. So the reason why you live your life according to the seven-day cycle is derived from this sort of strange fluke from ancient Rome, from the names of the Anglo-Saxon deities, and also from King Sargon I of Akkad. 2300 BC. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you learned something new and I hope you'll check out my new book, Fluke, Chance, Chaos, and Why Everything We Do Matters.